to episode four of the Big Head Pod. And I guess I didn't get a chance to even introduce you, but one of the most polarizing players of my generation, man with the Beauty luscious kick. locks, Mr. John Rocker. <laughs> Johnny Rock, how are you today, sir? I'm good, Mitchie. How you doing, brother? <laughs> I have not been able to stop Kevin, laughing Kevin, since we've talked. <laughs> my, my eighth favorite teammate of all time. You're number eight, buddy. You come in, you, you, make, you make top ten. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I know, and it's pretty good, right? Yeah, it's not bad for what's it been about eight, ten years now. I think since we've since we've talked, I was trying yeah. to go through your yeah. uh, eight, eight, eight favorite teammate of all time. Okay, I'll, I'll have to work up to to number one, but I I just I, first of all I wanted to go on to, <laughs> as I sit here and look at this this lovely picture of you. Then what year was this picture, Rock? Uh, that, that ridiculous photo you put up with me on the, uh, on the internet. Yep. <laughs> um, that would have been either four, 14, 14 or 15, so what, six, seven years ago? So have you, Eight years ago, something like that. So have you cut your hair since then? Oh, I still got the wig, man. You know, I, I haven't gone, uh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't gone the, uh, the uh, Larry Fine route, uh, route like you, buddy. I haven't never done that. No, but it's, I, I just, do you, I mean, are you doing hair product things now? I, I see. You were, you've done. No, I just, I just, that's just, I'm, I'm blessed. It's just got, got a good wig. Thanks, dad, granddad, whoever the, whoever the fuck I got. It is. You know, it is. It is. Good, but um, you're not, from the great, you know, great wig. You're not man bunning it, are you? Um, let's see. After I left you in Texas, um, did get the hair long and, uh, did man bun it <laughs> until one day I saw myself, I kicked my own ass and then I cut my hair. Yeah, that, that that actually did happen for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you you actually grew up yeah, in that moment. Yeah. That's what you're saying. You got wiser. No, it was a little a little past shoulder length. I didn't cut my hair for like a year. A little past. But I swear to God, though, with long hair, I was stronger. What? Much stronger with long. Hair. Everything you ever seen. As soon as I cut it, not so much. So what that's the hell that's what this picture is. So you you're telling me you lost weight. You look kind of frail in this picture with with the hair. And then it just grew from there. So it's been, you haven't cut it in how long now? No, you did. Um, <laughs> when I, when I left Texas, what was that? I don't know if I knew that was, 03 or something. Um, yeah, from probably like 04, 05, 06, I had the long wig. Yep. Yeah, so it went about three years there with a long wig. And then, like I said, when I have in the mirror, I kicked my own ass. I'm like, fuck, I got to cut this shit. Um, but the weirdest thing was, as soon as I cut it, I mean, it was, was I, I, I lost like half my strength. Yeah. You know? Was that when you were doing pros versus Joes? Yeah, so I did have I did have a long wig of pros versus Joes. Okay. So I put like a man but up under my hat. So, yeah. So you've become kind of you know, the, the reality TV guy now. It seems like you're you were doing all kind of stuff. Two. I, I got invited. They both pay me very well. So, um, but I will say that that Survivor shit. Yeah. Other reality. Not reality. I mean, pros and Joes, it was retakes and it was it was unscripted, scripted. Yeah, say this like that. Say you two act like you're in a fight. I mean this is reality is this, this bullshit. Um it's not reality. Survivor thought the same thing. Ah, hard to be. Wrong. Very difficult. Fuck it. I mean, just uh, I mean no 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 cease, no end to your misery all day every day. Just, just, just nothing but just misery right in your face all right long. 105 degrees, 108 degrees on the equator. Ate about 200 calories a day. Uh, bugs just, you know, having sex on you fucking constantly. Just get the fuck off me. Um, I was on the show, thank God, I went for 11 days. Lost 20 pounds in 11 days. Fucking miserable. There's nothing but nonstop misery. Absolutely fucking brutal. How did, <laughs> yeah, we're not, uh, we're not volunteer for that one again. How did that even come about? I mean, where people just uh, let's uh, let's find John Rocker and throw him. No, in, I just, uh, some knew, knew somebody uh, who was some somehow some way that the casting for CBS and they just sent me a random email. Hey, want to be on the show? <laughs> well, yeah, I ain't nothing better to do. How fucking hard can it be? Yeah, we found out. Um, yeah, they asked me. I accepted, and okay, well, I went to all the protocols and went to all the, you know, the, the they fly to L.A. and you have to, you know meet uh 
I can't remember these idiots' names anymore. Um, as a producer for the show, that guy anyway, meet him and and probes and all those guys. And uh, once you're, you know, just come like us, have a complete take. we don't want him. Um, you know, be a pass roll smell test, uh, which I think the smell test for me was yes, he is just as big an asshole as we've heard. Definitely put him on. It'll be great for ratings. Um, so uh, yeah, put me put me on that thing. And uh, uh, after about the first six hours, I'm like, I thoroughly regret my decision. I should have done that. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a it was a whole bunch of whole bunch of fucking sucks, a whole bunch of sucks. <laughs> so yeah, now you've been bro. It's been uh, I don't know. We hadn't we hadn't talked in forever. I can't remember the last time I didn't saw your ass. I I know. Man. It seems like you had fallen off the planet for a while, and then and then uh, you run to Fry up there, and uh, where were you guys? Um, Montana. Totally well. Where, yeah. Uh, okay. For the uh, yeah, great, 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 we got we to get you up there. I'm getting, uh, getting Ellis Burks up there next year. Um, the baseball idiots, uh, Nagel, Mike Hampton, um, of course, Jeff, uh, Jeff Nelson. Um, Joey Hamlet was there this year. Um, uh, trying to think who else, me, first player of mine, Marcus Stroud, damn good dog. Uh, George, that's right, defensive end, uh, a bunch of years. Marcus was there. Um, I, don't, I don't know how this guy's gotten gotten some of these folks, but it's only the second year of the event, and uh, he's got a pretty damn good old dais. So, uh, um, I said we'll try to get uh, Otis Nixon uh, was there, so we need like you and uh, get Ellis Burks. Ellis said he'd come next year. Well, it's it's uh, it's, it's ter- 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 well, uh, ter- well, baseball guys, pretty little Nixon, very nice. It, it seems like it was was a uh, a pretty big event. You said it was some nice weather up there as well. And I, Fry had sent me that picture of you guys, and he had mentioned, he had told him, I said, hey, gosh, I just run into Rock on Facebook. I was making sure, because you never know if it's really you. And I hadn't, I hadn't seen or anything. And then all of a sudden, so my, uh, so my wife asked me, he goes, you're going to get Rock? I said, oh, absolutely. I said, Rock's got, he's got a great person, <laughs> personality for all this. He's just, just a very outgoing guy. He's going to, he wears his emotions on his sleeves, and it goes back to uh, just your playing days. You were the same way, weren't you? No, I, I thought it was much more should Hey, buddy, you 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 you, you don't think so? I uh, would like that. Oh, I was I was a fan of the, the sprint out of the duck from the bullpen all the way in, and you were just and we were yeah, that's right. You and I were talking I about this. You and Bill, huh? I'm a quiet type, you know. Yeah. I don't know what to call him. The more calm, quiet type because that's what I, I tried to be. I thought it was. I'm not a calm, quiet type. I mean, I was more of a raging fucking lunatic than anything else. But it was yeah. a switch, though, right? All of a sudden, you get in there, you just start throwing. You were that guy who just seemed like he had two warm-ups, and then you're ready to go throw 100 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I said I had uh, exactly that because of our um, esteemed manager, what a fucking boob he is, uh, Jerry Naren there in uh, in, uh, in Texas. Um, is, he, is, he, is, he, uh, is that clown still in the game? Is he still in the game or no? I have no idea what Jerry is doing I, these days. I was Carol back of it about two weeks ago. I came around, it was like White Sox. But I was like, there's no way Jerry Narrett is still a fucking game on a damn bench somewhere. And I, I could have sworn I saw Narrett in the back of some, some old guy's jersey. But yeah, I remember um, I think it was our, our first interleague series against Houston. They were still in the National League. And I remember sitting in the outfield with, um, oh shit, Bill Catcher. Uh, right, Hassel, uh, Bill Hassman. Yes, Bill. Love Bill. Bill the uh, the sweet sweet of Bill Hasman. Yeah. And um Bill Bill fucking loved Jerry. I hated Jerry. And we were out there like, hey Bill. Um I think it was it was uh it was them and then the Pittsburgh next. I think they, they might have been a, a three game road swing all freaking interleague. I'm like, hey Bill, hey, uh, how many games is this this uh, interleague we were before they think they Jerry just butchers a double switch or something like that. And he didn't think it was funny. Well it was fucking game one. When he calls the bin, and then uh, Octavio Dotel was just shoving it right up our ass. And I don't remember who was throwing for us, but they were like fifth in the, in the order or something. And it was a tight game. It was a tie game, a one run game or something like that. And called down, and Quirky, Jim Quirk goes, Hey, Rock, if we get to, again, who are we switching for us? We get to them, they're due up fifth, you're in. Well, Dotel's going to get us. That's like a 10 pitch inning. I mean, they weren't even, you know, they weren't even sniffing, you know, they didn't even have a base runner. I was throwing in front of the mound. I didn't, they, just, they didn't touch dirt. Throw to the mound. Throw from you know, 45 feet or so. One, two, three, 10 pitches, and then all of like, you know, two minutes, sit back down, phone rings, quirky, hey, Rock, you're in. Huh? What do you mean? 
Uh, I haven't taken my jacket off yet. Are you shitting me? <laughs> Fucking like seventh or eighth inning. Fucking uh, Bagwell, Bishop, and Berkman. Thanks for coming. Really? <laughs> Fucking prick. Yeah. I know it's not a single war pitch. I got to face fucking two future Hall of Famers. Good job, Naren. No one, no one, no one you took a, a team with a two hundred million dollars salary, like twenty games out of five hundred. What a joke that guy was. <laughs> Hope you listen, Jerry. Love you. He uh, wasn't. Are you, are you arguing? Are you arguing me? Argue that Jerry Dare was not a clown. Argue with me. <laughs> Jerry Dare was not a clown. Three reasons and go. What are your three reasons he was not a clown? Good sounds crooked. <laughs> he, he used to live in the Texas area, so you probably got to like hang out with people that like that guy. I no, I uh, haven't I seen him since he awful. left here. Since he left, since probably uh-huh. that long. It's probably been seventeen years or so since he left here. I've not seen or heard of him. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Aaron was out, was out in the uh, in a Roman dug out of a uh, uh, in a Ranger outfit. It could, uh, could have been his his yeah. nephew, maybe Sam there that, that, that did pitch here, or. Uh, uh, Johnny, his brother, that uh, that was here. Yeah. I think I'm not. Sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't. Leave, I don't have time to watch baseball oh, anymore. <laughs> given that boo, a uh, team with what four future Hall of Famers on it, uh, that was worth 190 some odd million dollars at the time, uh, would have been like giving your 16 year old kid a freaking Ferrari. Yeah, and then you know, a, a Ferrari and a bottle of vodka, and like don't crash it. Not by the equivalent. What the hell, him? That's what Hicks was thinking on that one. So, so he did think highly of you. He just knew you were ready to go. Jerry did. What? Jerry thought very highly of you then. He was ready to go after three pitches. Let's go. I'm surprised he didn't let you swing the bat then, too. Yep, Jerry, Jerry, didn't, Jerry didn't like me at all. Thing was mutual. <laughs> uh, that, that, that was a rude awakening, man, from uh, you know, five, six years of Bobby Cox and then going to uh, – to uh, Cleveland with a uh, manual. That's always a great dude. And then, and then showing it with dude to, to Jerry Merritt and Oscar Acosta. I mean, talking about just like, where the hell of a uh, you dropped me into? Oscar Acosta tried to fight me one day in the coach's office. That was one one man that I was probably hit between he and Rudy, two of the toughest men. And then I think Oscar was killed in a uh, something. He was in a car accident in Dominican. Yes. Yeah, I think a year, a year later yeah. after that. But he was. We used to go lunch uh, at least once a road trip, and uh, much time in spring training instead of shagging fly balls in the outfield, I'd sit in the would sit in the uh, in the uh, bullpen and we just shoot the shit, you know. And then one day he gets pissed off at me in the uh, all through the damn coach's office and literally tried to me and me and Jamie Corey, Jamie Corey had to get between me and Oscar. And he got him he's like, let's go, rock, let's go, me and you right now, let's go see who's tougher. Like, are you fucking kidding me? A pitcher goes trying to fight me? What's wrong with you, man? But, yeah. but what did that lead to? It seemed like you guys had a good relationship other than that then. Because he wasn't back. No, we that. did. But that's, that's what I'm saying. You don't he see that. that. Uh, I mean, he got fired like two weeks later and they brought in... Uh, or- brought in... Um, Wetland. Oral. Was it Oral or Wetland? Huh? Oral for shot. They brought in... Okay, they brought in Oral. Okay. Then was... No, then Wet was our bullpen coach maybe... I don't even. I, sh- I can't remember last week, let alone let alone remembering all that. But I do remember Oscar. But I never knew that you guys were about to go at it. That would have been a pretty pretty interesting thing to go at, especially with Jamie in the middle of that. He probably. Yeah, I, I was saying like, well, how do you treat? I'm not going to treat like a bitch, but I mean, you don't know when I'm just punching your coaches either. Yeah. So, like, huh? Let's just do this one. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Rob Dibble and uh, and uh, and uh, help me. Um, I know who you're talking. He's a Mandarin tank. Yeah, Dibble and uh, shit, all the Americans, Pinella. Yeah, and they they kind of kind of blow the glove out. But uh, and yeah, well, I remember being in uh, in Tampa and uh, Pin- Pinella, great manager, lovely guy, very respectful guy, love that dude. And um, I was only there for a year. We had this, this little young Dominican kid making like his fourth or fifth start. Doesn't get out of the second, and uh, I'm getting ready to go out to the bullpen, take the kid out. He, he bases chucked, already give up like three or four, pull him out of the game. Straighten the clubhouse, you know, not, you know, didn't, 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 didn't stop watching anything in the dugout. But he comes up there, he's uh, getting, you know, getting, getting shit undressed. He's undressed, towel on, walking in the shower uh, about a minute after he gets up there. Here comes Lou. I said, I, 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 I can remember the pitch coach. Pitch coach walks in there, kid, you better get your fat ass back on the, uh, on the bench. And 
and watch your teammate get you, uh, you know, get out of the fucking mess you just made. And uh, looks at the pitching coach, just kept, keeps getting undressed. Panella walks up there. Kids walking into the shower, towel on, get your black net back on it. Looks at Lou, walk right in the shower. I'm like, holy shit, kid. <laughs> That's some balls right there. Yeah. He, um, he was in AAA by the evening. <laughs> by the time he was out of the shower, I'm sure. Uh, Lou was like, Lou, 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 I look at Lou, Lou looked at me, I just put my head down, I just walked on by. I'm like, Jesus Christ, please don't, 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 don't hit me on that kid's behalf, Lou, please. Don't punch me. I know you're fucking fuming right now. And I wonder if you see any of that nowadays with, with pitchers and stuff. That, well, you saw the somebody did the other day. Somebody flipped the ball. To the, uh, one of the coaches came out coming off the mound. Can you imagine if that would have happened to a Lou Pinella or something? He probably would have choked out whoever flipped in the baseball and told him to pick it up and hand it back to me. Bobby, what? Yeah, Bobby wouldn't have caught it. Bobby wouldn't have caught it. He'd let it drop. And good God, it would have been your ass. That's what I mean. It's just these kids nowadays, they don't have any respect for their managers, even the players that have been there. You know, we talk about when you 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 were uh, you and I were talking about Billy Wagner. Guys just came in and threw hard, but they kind of knew where it was going. Now you just have guys that just throw, throw hard. They have no idea where it's yeah. going. So you were kind of one of those. The, the, the thing was, huh? I mean, hitters had a game plan. Yeah. You know, two strike approaches. I mean, they're, they're just trying to back lay a walk shit. You know, O two three O. It doesn't matter. You know, doesn't doesn't matter. I mean, that, down down by three in the night. Lead off guy try to hit a four run homer, fucking like lead off guy tonight. Free run, free run. But let's just play small ball, get a couple guys on, start rallying out. We're yeah. trying to try to try to launch and pinch one. Yeah, I'm sure you like you know. I'm sure you threw it, guys, because they were they threw it one of your guys just to make a point, and that was it, and move on. But now you can't even do it. Yeah, I didn't. I always threw it a couple guys. I mean, every time I come in, you know, games usually on the line. I can't be you yeah, know, adding guys on base. Some of personal grievance, but uh. I did. I did. I did get a Actually, here, here's a here's a really good story. Remember uh, Brad Fulmer? Remember yep. that guy? The Cobra. I played with the Cobra here. Uh, what? Well, well, anyway, so we we uh, we share a uh, spring training complex uh, with the Expos when I was coming from the minors. And yeah, you're. I didn't. I didn't mature much, but when I was you know eighteen, nineteen, twenty, I was you know really a hot headed dickhead, and um, just did, didn't somebody just didn't like Brad Fulmer's stance. And there was a little stance he'd like almost like a Pete Rose stance. He'd, Slap his front arm, you know, and yep. kind of jack guy tatted up. I was, just didn't like him. Didn't know him. Never met him. Just like ah, and just cocky son of a bitch. And me and Damian Moss used to take just take turns throwing. We 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 would play the Expos every other day. Lately, the Expos and the Mets every other day. And uh, I, I saw him and Vlad Guerrero and kind of, we just face each other, you know, three four times a week. And uh, and playing those little backfields in Palm Beach, the backstop was. 12 feet behind home plate. I mean, there's just no backstop room there. I used to throw it former and balls would stick in the chain link fence by missing. <laughs> I, I, I had to hit him at least eight, 10 times. And at this point in time, I mean, after you know, number two, I mean, even though I was kind of wild back then, you got to know, you got to know I'm for you. And, and Mossy too. You got to know that these guys just don't like me for a reason and they're just freaking I mean, sticking me. And uh, so I go to Toronto, what, you know, six, seven years later with Atlanta, uh, throw, Working out after the game, just me and the street coach, uh, probably like a Sunday, you know, Sunday day game. We're the only ones in there. Here comes Fulmer walking in by himself. I go, oh shit, here we go. John, hey man, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. You're having a great year, man. How's the family, man? I haven't mean, seen you in like, God, I'm not feeling like a dick. This guy's actually a nice guy. Like, you have any idea about how you just throw it you back in the day? <laughs> You're a nice guy. I'm like, oh, piece of shit, I am. <laughs> He's actually a very nice dude. Like, what the dick? He yeah, did. He yeah. would have that. He would because we were even afraid to go in the batting cage when we when he was here. You, he, there's two cage. You know the two cages. We would go on the other side because he'd give you that look that like a bull. Yeah, we're gonna go hit on this side and just yeah. kind of stay away from him. But he was a nice guy if you would actually just sit down with him. And yeah. that was no. He uh, and he, uh, that's the first time I ever met him any closer than sixty feet away. And uh, yeah, it was completely nice. Like I feel like. And he never brought it up at all. No. Yeah. yeah, I sat there and talked to him for forty five minutes while I worked out. Didn't mention it the first time. Remember back in the day, the, well, the one that really hurt was I think the eighth time you hit me. That was the one that really stuck. Yeah, I think it, I think it hit me. The kid he stayed there for a second. No, he didn't. Uh, didn't say shit about it. So, <laughs> oh, that was a little bad, right? yeah. And Damien didn't throw very hard though. He didn't throw like you did. Did you throw upper nineties when you were when you were eighteen, nineteen? 
no, nah, I was like maybe 93, 94. And I was also, you know, 6'5", about 200 pounds. I was a skinny little kid. I oh, was a skinny little kid. The uh, only other guy that threw that was Jim Leritz. Excuse me. was Jim Leritz. Um, and that was in 2000, 2001. And I threw at him uh, because of the Mark Waller's home run in the 96 World Series. <laughs> I, I grew up in, yep. in Bacon, Georgia. grew up a <laughs> diehard Braves fan. He broke my heart in 96, that's a bitch. That's when I saw him, like, what, uh, I mean, like five, six years later, I drilled him for that home run five years earlier. <laughs> just, just, that was just completely personal, too. Did he stare at you or say anything? Did you yeah. say anything to him? Huh? Did you say anything to him, or did he say yeah. anything to you? Uh, uh, playing with him in, in Puerto Rico in winter ball one year, and saying that he's my teammate. We'd go out drinking, hanging out. Couldn't have been a better dude. Never never told him I'd buy drill about though. Never told him. Hey, did you ever have that? Yeah, kind of, that was kind of on purpose. I never said shit to him. <laughs> <laughs> never said anything to him. Yeah, good dude. Good dude. <laughs> that just. <laughs> Rock, we need to hang out more. <laughs> we got to hang out more. I think it's on, on this, uh, this uh, charity, uh, charity tournament circuit. Um, you get in with one or two of them, and these, uh, some of these promoters that, that put these tournaments on, they, they know you, get you in the pipeline. I, mean, I, I get invited to probably 20 a year. I'll probably play in about 10 of them. Um, we have a lot of fun. That's the only, only place you get to see, you know, get to, uh, get to see each other, um, at, at these tournaments, you know? Yeah, there's a, we do a lot of, we do a lot of charity oh. stuff here, uh, through, through our alumni as well. And just, you said just different stuff, but it's 175 degrees out. You don't want to play golf in it. So I wouldn't mind that 80 degree weather. Probably where you are down there, it's probably nice. But it just gets. To yeah, no. Well, you're still okay. well, I've, I've got one I bought you two on here. It's the end of uh, October. Um, I think last year, uh, Erickson was here. Um, um, Brady was here. Uh, I, 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 um, Brady Anderson, who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, sure, we'll play this. Um, yeah, pretty pretty little uh, clutch that comes down sometimes. Uh, Glavin usually plays in it. It's, it's, it's pretty you know, pretty good little a bunch bunch of baseball football guys too. Um, Jim McMahon plays in it, and Ed Two Tall Jones. And it's pretty pretty good little turnout. It's fun. We'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll pre day event. Yeah, we uh, it's with, I've got with three we got three little three kids now. With two are going to be in eighth grade, and one's in eight uh, going to be in third grade. So I'm, it's I'm, I'm, huh? I'm in my ears. I'm in my ears. All, all three of them are mine. You can tell they all look they they all look like me. So they actually all have the funny thing is, Rock, they don't have big heads. Oh, you have to Much to your chagrin, like they, they do not have big heads. Wolf, wolf, and I've been up uh, falling over frontwards a lot when they're walking. Doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so no, they don't. They just just between that doing sports, uh, traveling around with them. Doing, I mean, we go nonstop. You've got uh, it's just it's perpetual until a point where they can at least drive. And that, or they can, or I guess we could always Uber them somewhere if we need to be. Between doing that and helping my wife uh, with what she's doing, she left work and she stopped doing hygiene. But finally, after twenty years, she got sick of it. So she's got a personality like you. Um, <laughs> so she, <laughs> so she went into. We, we stopped doing hygiene. Like, quit shaving, wear deodorant, wash your teeth and shit. <laughs> I mean, you about you about something else? Dental hygiene. <laughs> She she got out of that. Oh, she's a pusher. Yeah. Oh, just, oh, oh, the business. Oh, business. Oh, okay, yeah. work. <laughs> Bur- business right. side of it. So she got she got out of that, and Way she off. was like you. She wanted to be uh, more personable, so she's doing uh, some business development for a, for a firefighter roofing here in, in Texas. So we, uh, which actually helps with a lot of veteran stuff we do for charity stuff. You talk about all the charity stuff that we're involved in. So she's uh, she's doing that. And we help them out. We we do we just did a uh, clay shoot last week for uh, uh, fun. Timber and leg, uh, Timber and Creek Legacy with program for veterans and stuff. They do all kinds of stuff. We go out, so they do a lot of big stuff for, the, for especially with the military around here and the police. So we, I mean, we always are always looking for right. golf guys and have guys come in. So I mean, we could we could get you in here with your personality. Yeah, you light that place up. Yeah, I love it. I I, I had so much time in Dallas though, since I uh, I got done. Um, or about my last 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 year I played out there. I don't, you know, fly to the airport a bunch, but uh, don't don't ever ever stay. Um. Yeah, that'd be fun, man. Get me, uh, you got all my, my contact stuff. Man. I'd love to come out there and, and uh, we'll just wait till it cools off. Uh, but at this rate, it doesn't, it doesn't even look like it's so, going to so cool off. Assuming I'm, you know, I'm, you know, have some bastard kids show up and 
Hey, Dad. It's been, uh, it's been a while. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wasn't sure of. If you kind of you could alienate yourself from from different cities, you know, and I'm sure you had somebody running around in each <laughs> in each one back in the day. You never know; those Father's Day cards show up. Uh, this coming, I'm so freaking excited. This coming weekend, uh, going to Greenville, South Carolina. As I was in Double A uh, with Atlanta, we won won the Southern League that year, and um, 25 years ago, uh, you know, th- this year, and uh, we're getting maybe about 15, 18 guys off that team back together, and as we're putting everything together and all that, my first comments was, "Sure, to do this, guys. There's a, a real list right now. You, you, you know, I'm having like four or five chicks show up with uh, you know a couple of, like 21 year old kids, and uh, yeah, and." Uh, to see you here <laughs> yeah yeah like, so. was, was it meet it was meet the uh meet the fockers right where the kid showed up mm-hmm. where his kid showed up mm-hmm. with, the, with the baseball player i figured though you could have been yeah. you could have made or it could be like uh what was it east east bound and down east bound and down yeah doing that type yeah. of thing in minor leagues i'm sure you yeah. made a name for yourself all throughout the minor league cities rock being a kid like you were 18 Traveling around and all those. I wasn't the ladies man. So I got to the big leagues. Who would have? Who would have? Who would have thought it? And uh, I needed I needed money and fame to get chicks to like me. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't do it all the first alley alone. So. Your where was your first year of pro ball? What city were you in? Uh, ninety eight Atlanta. In- Atlanta Atlanta ninety eight. No, you I mean pro ball. As soon as you signed at eighteen, where were you playing? Uh, so it was, it was rookie ball in Palm Beach. Uh, and then first, like, like, uh, short season, but you know, you'd be you actually playing, you know, you're going to yard at four o'clock playing night games. Was, uh, uh, Danville, Virginia, yep. the fine town of Danville, the Appy League, the yeah, Appy League. Yep, that's a that's a that's a fine, that's a fine league. I tell you, the first game I ever played in, too, we played against the Burlington Indians, and uh, Bartola Cologne started against us. Old Bart did that was, that was before he got fat and uh, just throwing just, just ungodly cheese. He's, he's, 90 year old kids like what the fuck was that i just saw that was 101 yeah, you just saw 101 right there good luck with your bomb bat yeah and you can't see in those ballparks either you're talking out you're in the happy mountains uh, right there with those <laughs> so you yeah, felt right at home through that league you, you're you right through nascar row in the happy league you got martinsville danville you or not yep, danville. right there do what yeah right there we, we were well uh, maybe 45 minutes from martinsville yeah, so you were you were all through all yeah, that no. stuff, but you're 18 in yeah, the middle of so. in you know in Virginia in the middle of nowhere. What do you you know what do you what do you think of yourself at, at that point? You're just were you just out there just trying to just trying to get through it at that point or what? I mean, what's what's an 18 year old kid like you coming sure. from South Georgia thinking? Yeah. You're 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 making a good start. You're you know, you're, you're spending six seven innings. You give up one or two runs. You strike out ten. You're like. Laying in bed that night, and you're, you know, mapping out the the quick route you think you had. Man, I want to do this. You know, by the end of the year, I might I might get a call to make it. I'll probably start next year at high eight, and then maybe I'm about to you know, double A. I'll probably double A by this time next year. And then I might go to big league spring training. You know, what you know, eight team of in, just make the camp. And I'm like, you know, 2021, big team of the Then next start, you will get out of the fucking second. You're know, like, I'm gonna start getting my resume together and start. Uh, you're trying to go back to college or send my resume around to some of the used car lots and you know, try to try my hand about selling cars. <laughs> it's just a, a roller coaster of emotions from a 18 year old kid that bases their uh, entire future on how one start goes. So, so you had no thoughts of going to college then, basically I, out of high school. You were signed in regardless. It's what? You had no thoughts of college out of high school. No, I did. I mean, I went to uh, the funny thing was uh, I got I signed with Georgia and I was hell bent to go to Georgia. And the Braves draft me kind of late because I, you know, of course, didn't didn't know my ass from a hole in the ground back then, and just didn't know how the game was played. And so these these scouts would call me up, and you know, of course, they will, you know, your, your talent level and, and mentality and your draft ability. You know, draft ability is that's, that's a big part of you know, just you know, piss away a top round pick with some guy that's just going to you know give you a draft pick back and go to school, you know, regardless. And I tell these stupid these scouts, man, I'm like the dumbass I was that. If you draft, I don't have a sign. I've always wanted to play at Georgia. I'm going to Georgia. I don't have a tour to play you know, pro ball yet, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they were slating me somewhere in the top, you know, top five rounds. I went in the 17th round. They ended up giving me more money than the fifth round pick got, but they were nevertheless on the 17th round. 
because I told every scout I talked to that, you know, I'll see you in three years. I'm going to, I'm going to college. And, uh, I didn't sign until like the end of August that year. And, um, the way they signed me was, uh, John Scherholz and uh, Chuck Lamar, uh, would come to all my American Legion games. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd throw a Legion game and they'd drive down from Atlanta, the team's on the road, would drive down from Atlanta and watch me pitch, uh, my American Legion game, would take me out to dinner afterwards and, you know, all that stuff. And you know, it was just the same, same thing, not going to college, going to college. And, um, I went to Georgia and went through orientation, got my class schedule. And about a week before school started, uh, Sir Holtz invites me up to uh, to the old Fulton County Stadium to work out you know, before one of the games during batting practice. And this was in it's '93, so the Braves did a back-to-back World Series, and, and we go up and make it 80 80 miles away. It was a you know, an obnoxious Braves fan, and was, you can still remember jumping up and down on my bed when Sid slid, you know, just yelling at my little like 17-inch TV when when Sid rounded third. I said, I can still remember doing that. <laughs> And then, you know, here I was a year later was, uh, you know, in Fulton County Stadium on the field. And there's Deion Sanders. There's Smoltzy. There's Greg Olson. I'm like, good God, man. I'm getting dressed in the clubhouse with these guys in the shower after my workout and, <clears throat> and all that. And, um, and after my workout, I got showered up, went in the shareholder's office, and he just took a contract and pushed it across his desk. Like, you ready to sign that yet? I said, son of a bitch, all right, give me that thing. And signed it, and that was it. So, that was the end of that, and um, had to go home and call up Steve Weber. It was, a, it was a good story. I had to call up Steve Weber, who was Georgia's uh, manager at the time. And of course, I'm 18, and you know Weber's probably 50ish, and um, we had to call him like literally six days before school started. And they were, you know, as a as a college guy, was 11.7 scholarships for a whole 25 man roster, uh, and they gave me a 95 percent scholarship to play at Georgia, which is I mean, it's, you know basically a uh, you know what a little over 10 scholarships now for the other 24 guys and uh six days before school started now scholarships going to be wasted I had to call steve up and be like yeah i'm uh not coming i was a little late be telling you but yeah i'm not coming up there and uh he was he was none too happy I and mean, then what was it that was in 93 so we we're playing the yankees in 99 in the world series and uh i think it was after game three maybe um sitting there at a lobby bar with hobby or whoever we were sitting there with just having a drink Tap on the shoulder, turn around at Steve Weber, and uh, he was scouting for the Yankees. Then he's like, "Yeah, I guess you made the right decision." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so, Steve. But uh, yeah, he's like, "Boy, I was pissed at you, though. Like you, you, you jacked up our whole scholarship plan the whole next year. Like we had a whole wasted scholarship because of you." I'm like, yeah, I know. My bad. <laughs> so yeah, you are, so, 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 so that was the last time you actually stepped foot what? on a college campus to actually go learn was when you went to get your schedule. Or to tell him you weren't there? Uh, a couple off seasons with the Mercer University uh, for about uh, three off seasons. We get we get uh, most of the quarter done, and then uh, you know bail and bail and go to spring training. We will take my finals early and, and go go uh, go to camp. So you were you were a starter coming out. When did they finally throw you in the bullpen and say this is going to be your going to be your thing? Uh, Puerto Rico. I went to, uh, you know, so started all the way through uh, with the Fall League in, in 97. I had a good Fall League. I was, um, I mean, you're like a mid twos in the Fall League as a starter. Uh, it was a weird thing. There was three Hall of Famers that were already on that staff. So, um, that was me kind of a, kind of a tough staff to crack. And, uh, so they, they sent me to Puerto Rico to see if I could relieve. And, um, and, uh, did, you know, did, did, did well. So actually, did, uh, obviously, uh, had the mentality of a uh, uh, reliever more you know, much more so than a starter. That was, that was my deal starting. I would, you know, usually two, three, four innings would uh, would throw really well, and just mentally the concentration level to you know, stay that focused for you know two, two and a half hours. I'd, I'd usually usually start mentally, you know, getting distracted or whatnot, fifth, sixth inning, and and uh, and, and and you know usually have to kind of end my end my start on fumes um, just from a mental level and. Um, but we're leaving going in and just, just air it out for, you know, 15, 18, 20 pitches. Just, just really suited me. And went to Puerto Rico and I think I had like a one seven in Puerto Rico. And, uh, that was, that was kind of, kind of the end of that. So we, 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 we stayed and stayed the pen the rest of the career. So, so what made you decide to that whole, you know, your whole sprinting out from the bullpen type of thing? What did just, you know, everybody, they seem to have their, ah, what is it? Called? Your, I don't know what you even your call stick. it. Yeah, your, yeah, as Mikey would call it, your shtick. How did you come up with that? Is this something you just decided one day I'm just going to be this 
this guy or what? No. Uh, if you if you had read my book, Kevin, you would know. I can't uh, read, John. You know that. Uh, if, is it on tape? You get out your wife. <laughs> I'm just going to read your bedtime story of a book, you know. Uh, it's an easy read, you know, mainly pictures and big words. Or, uh, uh, big words. Um, but anyway, so I think it was my, yeah, my first outing. Um, you know what it's like. I mean, you, you play all the way through the minors, and again, you know, your your good starts, your games, you went four for four with a bomb or something. And you're 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 mapping out the the fast track. You think you're into the big leagues, and you know you don't get a hit for freaking three days. You're like, shit, I need to I need to go back to school and start thinking about you know selling insurance or some shit. So you know, same thing for about four years, and um, and never really faced you know a true big league guy. I mean, I know you, you probably faced some you know big league you know pitchers, and they were always you know kind of older guys, hurt guys. They were you know four A guys that were really down rehabbing an A ball or spring training or whatever. But they never faced a, a true legit big league guy. Um, at least one that wasn't you know down rehabbing and, and hurt and you know hadn't hadn't seen his bats in you know two or three months. But a, a true big league guy, and uh, so I've, I've been at a Puerto Rico for. I've been down in Puerto Rico for uh, I don't know, maybe maybe four or five days, and um, and uh, they sent, sent me the bullpen, and, and uh, it was um, I don't think my manager was uh, shit. Think of the minute, um, Tom Gamboa, Gamby. What, yeah. what an awesome dude that guy was. Tell me, don't think Tom did, but Gamby, my manager, like Rock, go go to the pen. Uh, Pudge is up. Uh, yeah. Um, if we get to him, you got him. Like, oh, you mean but, 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 just won the Silver Slugger and his like <laughs> four for five years All Stars and that guy, yeah, that guy. Like, ah, uh, okay. So, um, hang on one second, Mitchy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got some some youngins that are that are chirping over here. Um, so that, that was, I'm, I'm down to the bullpen getting loose and, uh, like it's coming out of this. I, I played for four years. Sometimes you think you're good enough. Sometimes you think you're not, you know, you try to translate. Oh, I had a great outing, but this is against a ball guys. You know, it's kind of hard to, you know, really don't kind of future you are if you, you know, showed up some, uh, some a balls team. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, getting loose. I'm like, this, this is the culmination of four years. If I go in and embarrass myself against fudge, is back to the drawing board and figuring shit out. If I pitch well, then you know that's going to be a huge, a uh, huge shot of confidence. And uh, you know, first guy gets on, I'm like, well, double play. Still may not have to go in. Next guy gets on, I'm like, all right, I'm definitely facing Pudge unless we, you know, true player back to back, you know, DPS. And sure enough, I faced Pudge with two outs. And uh, when uh, when Pudge got called and Gamby came out and raised that left hand and uh, toward the bullpen, I'm like, this is it. And when I even think just spread the bullpen, I'm like. There's four years that come out of this one at bat. Let's, let's go out there and fucking take care of it. Let's, let's stay right up Pudge's ass. And um, I went out and uh, struck him out on four pitches, slider swinging down away back foot. I can still see it. And, um, you know, getting the first, first legit big league guy I'd ever faced. And, uh, and that, that just gave me a, a huge shot of confidence that, um, you yeah, know, hey, the, the, the bullpen is right for me. And, um, you know, be the things I've been working on, you know, especially the last year to – you know, button up some loose ends and then kind of get me big league ready. I've been working, and um, the proof was in the pudding when uh, you know, I had a, a, a real good at bat against Pudge, and uh, and uh, that was it. So the, the sprint just kind of stuck from there. Just just have that aggressive mentality. It yeah. came from it came from facing Pudge just uh, accidentally. You know, kind of getting there and find out I'm going going to make a player. Or I'm going to make a damn used car salesman. <laughs> And you see these guys now that you know, they strike somebody out to that, just to that caliber. And they just sit there and they sit, rub it in their face, basically just yelling at them and this and that. I, I remember watching you striking guys out, but just, it, it was just more of a, that, like you said, that adrenaline coming out. Did you ever actually, somebody ever back talk you on the mound to get into a fight on the mound while you were, I mean, just because of your personality, I mean, you're just a, you, you know, the emotions <laughs> are on your sleeve type of guy and you were just going to be, be that. Did anybody ever actually really challenge you when you were out there doing that? No, I don't. I don't think so. I, I didn't ever eyeball guys. Um, no. Um, I mean, you no, see just, it now. It's all the time. time. Just, just out there, out there, get a job done, and um, you know, especially guys that were they were stud dudes. I mean, guys that you knew were be you know, future Hall of Famers. I mean, I faced Bagwell and Bishop a lot, and 
and uh, you know made a hell of a living uh, facing the the top four or five uh, with, with the Mets back then, which was you know Piazza and Olrud and, and Ventura. Uh, face those guys, just I mean, you know, probably once, twice a month, um, and handled you know, handled those guys you know really well. But you know, still got respect for them. Yeah, I, I might handle them pretty well last four at bats, but they can they can turn on me real quick. They're professional hitters, and and you know, where I'm, I'm handled right now, uh, they can also humble me real quick. So you better you know you better fucking you know check your ego and you know make it vision and try to get this guy out because. Even though you have have faced them very well the last uh, last couple months, the last series, uh, one mistake they can they can turn it around pretty quick. So don't don't uh, don't get too cocky there, big britches. I know you see you see that nowadays on TV. You know, what are your thoughts? Are you yelling at the TV at these guys that sit there and, and show people up and you know, chest and you know, fist bump themselves and chest bump and everything else when they strike somebody out? You know, it's it, if you're a pitching coach at that moment, what are you doing? I see you personally. I see you running out there and probably strangling somebody. Yeah, yeah, just, just, yeah, you just, just doing, you know, pitchers get pissed, bat flips, and you know, cocky ass trots around. The, well, same thing when a hitter gets pissed when you, know, you punch him out and in a big position, he wants to see just like you do, and uh, you're trying to get him out when he takes you deep, and you know, you, you don't like as a pitcher seeing that guy shove around the baseball. He doesn't like seeing you shove up when he, uh, you, you, you punch him out in the big spot. So, um, you know, he can't the only difference is he can't throw at you um, when you show him up. So, yeah, have have a little respect for the other player and respect the game the weirdest thing too is you know so many guys and i see this in these tournaments that i, that I play in that i've never met any closer than 60 feet but it's just that that big league alumni that big league camaraderie that i'm in the club you're in the club and i, I was playing a tournament in atlanta back in march and it faced johnny damon a bunch you know and johnny usually got the better of me uh, i hated facing that guy and uh walk into uh the pairing party that night uh he was the first guy that saw me from like 100 feet away Rock, what's up, buddy? Sprints to me, gives me a big hug. How you doing, dude? What are you like? Good, Johnny. Nice to meet you officially, but I never, you know, fully met Johnny. But it's just, um, you know, just just that mutual respect, and we both got the, you know, the, the big league alumni label on our back, and and um, you know, even if you, you didn't like somebody when you played with them or whatever, it's just it all goes away once you know once the uniform gets taken off and, and you're retired and you're you know, owning your uh, civilian life. Um, and so you just, you got to have respect for guys that, uh, you know, on other teams that, you know, they do well against you, you do well against them. You're still all part of the same team, which is, 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 you know, big league, big league brotherhood. So, you know, don't, don't act like, don't, don't act like a dickhead, man. He's, he's trying to earn a living just like you are. Exactly. Cause you never know the stories of where these guys come from. I mean, small town, I mean, you got, you got a chance to play for your, your hometown team and that's every kid's dream, you know, growing up to be able to, to do that, um, to play, play in the world series for your hometown team as well. And, you know, most people don't get a chance to experience that. So I'm sure that, you know, that had to be that, just like you said, that adrenaline when you got there uh, for that workout of being out there, I'm surprised you were even able to throw the ball over the plate being around all those guys. So it, it's amazing. Oh, nervous. Huh? Well, no. Not nervous as hell, man. Absolutely nervous as hell. And it's you know, walking by Schmolsey, you know, and, and little you know, that, you know that four years later, those guys were my teammates. But uh, at the time, eighteen years old, like holy shit, man, it's a, it's a huge deal. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty. It, it's it's pretty it's a cool good thing. that and it, that camaraderie that we have of you know, like you said, the of what guys have been through. It doesn't matter, you know, if you played the World Series or haven't even played in the playoffs. It's just that that respect that you have, the mutual respect, right? You were enemies on the field, but. You know, you see guys, granted, there were guys that were complete, you know, just complete asses out there. And I'm sure that, you know, I was fortunate enough to not play with everybody, anybody that way. I mean, hell, you think about it. Um, when you got, when you first came in, you know, people are always saying, oh, John Rocker, he's this, he's that. And I said, oh, people said, I never had a problem with Rock. Rock was, he just was, he was going to tell you what he thought. It wasn't, there was no, there was never any issues. Same with Carl, right? Carl, ever was same, was the same thing. People never had, Ah, oh, they're this and that. No, people don't have issues with it. They're good guys. It's just you know they get like you. People say they. Well, well, something. I, I, I would not mind, and I didn't like it. Tell you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have, I, then the guy that glad hands it to your face, and then you hear, you know, third hand that oh no, that, that guy actually hates you. Y'all hear the shit he talks about you when you're not around. I mean, I, I'd rather know to my face you don't like me than think we're buddies, and then hear from. You know your friend's friend that you know how much how much you you run me down in traffic you know, how much I, I suck you know well, as soon as I damn you know leave the clubhouse yeah you, know, you think I suck then all right that's that's fine whatever but you know tell me my face don't let me think we're buddies and then I, I learned later on that you know 
that, that you couldn't stand my guts, you know. That's, yeah. that's, 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 that's not what a man does. That's, that's pretty fucking tired. Well, that's what they pretty do tired. now. They go on social media and they bash you. Oh, yeah, I, I did this and did that. And no, that's what you say. You, you stand up for them right in your face. You have a problem? No. So you go, you, so we go back to you said I was number, we say I was number eight on your list of top. So who's eight. your top player? Who was your number one player, Rock? Uh, I don't know, who do I, I love playing with? Um, love playing with Rudy CNS, what a piece oh. of work that cat is. <laughs> well, and I, I, it, it, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously, I'm just being facetious when I say no. my, my number one number, favorite player. But, but Rudy uh, was a great, um, great guy. Rudy, I love that cat, dude. And he, he just had that, just that almost too nice, but almost that little bit of edge that, like, I don't really want to see you pissed off. Though. God, you're a really nice guy, but I can I can tell that switch can flip real quick. I don't, I don't want to make you mad. That's all he, jacked up, inked up. He had that oh, smile though too. Know. Yeah, you look at him; he's just a big bear. And he, Rudy, he, I guess he trained with uh, MMA fighters, and he talked about that mm-hmm. stuff. And you look at him; he just had that barrel chest, just a fun-loving guy. I wonder what he's doing yep. these days. Do you ever run into those guys when, you, when the Atlanta has their alumni stuff? Do what now? You ever run into him at all, or in, there's some of the guys? Uh, yeah, that guy. Um, I, I've done Brave alumni. I don't know, maybe seven, eight straight years. I won't do it this year because um, that's, that's actually this coming weekend. We'll go to Greenville instead. But uh, yeah, guys that don't come, um, Brett Boone doesn't come. Um, uh, Mike Reminger doesn't come. Love Mikey. Uh, and Russ Springer um, was part of that pen. Russ doesn't come. Rudy doesn't come. Uh, a lot of these guys, I don't know if they just got, you know, again, a lot of these guys play for, you know, eight teams. So you know, how, do you, how do you pick just one? But, uh, um, you know, a lot of those guys, I asked uh, Greg, Greg McMichael, the head of the alumni, the alumni foundation there in Atlanta, and um, you know, he's got everybody's contact info. He's like, I just don't hear back from these guys. Like, I buy them every year. I'm just getting no response. Yeah. I, just, I just think that's weird. So, some, some are recluse. Some show. guys just hide. Others are just want to be, you know, want to be around doing stuff. So I think it comes down to just – you said what some guys want to do. You you said you run into these golf things. I saw that list, guys you hadn't seen in years. You know, here we have a big alumni. Wow. We see the same same guys. Yeah, uh, so I posted the other day on social media. And you're talking about Leon Roberts, guys that you know that were your coaches that you've played or yeah. played with. And stuff. So I mean, it's that's a fun. yeah. Leon helped me. Obviously, he was our road hitting coordinator um, for my, my years in the minors, but. Uh, he would really focus with me on all my mentality. I was an extremely mentally weak person, you know, very defeatist. And yeah, you know, like I said, I, I would throw one good outing and I'm, I'm mapping out my fast track to the big leagues. And next outing would suck. And I'm like, shit, I'm going to get released next week. And it was all over the place mentally. And he got me, uh, told me to get a book. I still have it. Um, big leather bound book called the best of success. And it's got about maybe 25 different categories throughout the book. And it's famous quotes from people all the way through history, from Martin Luther King to JFK to Aristotle to, you know, whomever. And, um, you know, picked about five or six chapters there, confidence and uh, preparation, you know, were some of the some of the um, uh, the categories in there. And just the quotes you read from an MLK or the quotes you read from a John F. Kennedy or, um, you know, whomever. And it just, just really, uh, really kind of gets you thinking mentally. Um, you know, Joe Namus got a bunch of quotes in there and, and that kind of stuff. And he, he was, he was one person that finally put me on the right path of becoming mentally tough where I could climb on a mountain Yankee stadium in the world series with 60,000 throwing shit at me and, and, and go out and, you know, punch out Jeter. Um, just, you know, three or four years before I'd about have crumbled like a fucking cheap lawn chair. <laughs> and that's what people don't understand too, is, uh, just because you're a pitcher, it doesn't mean that the other coaches can't have some sort of an effect on you. Like a hitting guy like Leon, Doing that, just of changing, you know, your trajectory from where you were to where you, you know, where you ended up, uh, you know, with maybe you talk. Leon, Leon, yeah, helped me as much mentally as anybody did pitching coach or otherwise. Yeah, and that's what I mean. People don't they don't understand. They just think it's okay. Your pitching coach, uh, your bullpen coach, does the work for you. But now you run into guys, especially guys that played at the at the big league level, right? Part of that that's that mental part. Now I just think that they don't even teach that mental part. It's just a matter of. It's just keep going. They just want information. They're not able to figure it out on their own, right? Guys just go out and just throw yep. a baseball. They don't actually pitch. You know, everybody throws a hundred. Yeah, a lot of them. Right? Yeah, it's a lot just, of them do that. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, so. Well, Mitch, I, I got to get going. Yeah, bro. man. I, I appreciate everything, here. Rock, and we'll, uh, you might be a frequent flyer in here. We'll have to see maybe what the next episode of uh, what you're yeah, going to do. If you, if, you find, if you find yourself oh, doing man, another uh, series or something, we could, <laughs> we could do a reality show or something. Something. Yeah, well, I've, I've 
Uh, well, they're, they're putting up a, a group out of uh, New Orleans is, uh, that produces podcasts. Is, we're going to start working on putting me a show together here. should be ready by like maybe mid-September or so. Um, so. I'll ask you to return the favor and uh, get on an interview with now uh, one of your competitors. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be hitting you up for, a, for an interview here maybe uh, you know, October or so. Absolutely. I said we need, a, we need to get a VH1 behind the music with you, Rock. That should be something interesting to follow around. Yeah, you. That would be, be entertaining. Right. Absolutely. That's what it's about. Shock, shock value is what we're looking for here. So, but I appreciate you taking the time, Rock, to sit here with us and talk and, and go through stuff. And uh, yeah. like I said, we'll reach out. We'll, I'll get in touch with you. We'll get some golf and stuff. All right. Thank you, man. Love, All right. Uh, love, love you, brother. Love you, brother. Thanks, Rock. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys, for, uh, for today, for Rock joining us. And we will see you next time on the Big Head Pod. Thank you.